how to get started in real estate flipping, this is the video that's gonna show you step by step, move by move, how to get going. So stay with me, here we go. There's some key steps to getting started in real estate flipping. We're gonna go over those right here, right now. We're also gonna talk about where to get the money to finance your property, which is almost as important as finding the property. And finally, we're gonna talk about how to prep your property to sell it to get that money in escrow, which is really the end goal of buying the property in the first place, getting it ready to sell and reselling it and flipping that property. And at the end of this video, we're gonna talk about how to get into real estate flipping with zero money at all. First and foremost, to get started in real estate flipping, you have to do some market research of the area that you're buying. I like to look at price per square foot, what things have sold for, and as well, typical similar properties and what they're worth. I do that by going to a place like Zillow, Realtor.com, or Trulia, and putting in the sold button and comparing the properties that I'm looking at and getting an idea of what things sell for. For flipping, I like properties that are lower priced properties that have more upside. It's easier on your budget and less risky to buy properties in a lower price range, fix them up and sell them, than to buy stuff in a higher price range, fix them up and sell them, or just sell them because you have more risk. So I like lower risk. So a friend of mine once said to me, we were driving around Oakland, he said, Paul, why would you pay $250,000 to make $50,000 when you could pay $80,000 to make $50,000? And I never, ever forgot it because it was true, right? So if I can buy a mobile home and make 25,000, or I gotta buy a $300,000 property and make 25,000, I'd rather buy the mobile home and make 25,000, right? If I can buy a condo and make 15 or 20 grand, or I gotta buy a house to make 15 or 20 grand, that's way more money, I'd rather buy the condo, right? So you get the idea. So the least amount of money invested or risk for the most amount of money in return and looking at that. Remember that when you're getting started in real estate flipping. Another important aspect of real estate flipping is developing relationships with realtors and people that have control of property. You know, I can't tell you how many times realtors have literally handed me money. Like, here's a deal, you can make 100 grand on it, you want it or not. Why? Because they've got a don't want or somebody who doesn't want the property, they want a quick sale, they just want to get rid of it, or it's off market. A property I recently bought that I will be flipping was just full of trash. There was tension between the husband and the wife, there was a court order to get rid of it. I bought the property, I'm detrashing the property, I'm gonna clean it up, I'm gonna put it back on the market, I will make money. I finance with a private lender. So why was that property brought to me? It was brought to me because I had a relationship with the realtors. Both of them knew me. They said, hey, Paul, do you wanna buy this house? Can you close in this amount of time? And you know, they don't wanna clean it, they don't wanna fix it, they don't wanna do anything to it. Just, they just want to sell it and get their money. So there is another way for you to get started in real estate flipping is to establish relationships. Another important aspect of this real estate flipping game is to have your money lined up. So let's talk about that. It's important that you go to some private money people or have some investors or you yourself the investor by yourself, but have your ducks in a row. What do I mean by that? Talk to private money guys and gals, brokers, okay? Find out what's available in your marketplace. Find out what they can and can't do. You know, when I go into a deal and I'm buying a property to flip, I already know about how much I can borrow on it, about what I can sell it for, about what the money's gonna cost me and about how long it's gonna take me to renovate it. I know that from experience, but typically allow yourself at least two to three months to fix up the property, get it the way you want, and sell. Now, why do I say, some people say, Paul, you should be able to do that in a couple weeks. Maybe you can do it in a couple weeks, but remember there's the 90-day rule. The 90-day rule for some loans, like FHA says, they're not gonna give you a new appraisal over what you paid for it until after 90 days. So I may let it sit for a month and not even start on it and work on something else until such time as I get it ready so I can get a new appraisal 
with an FHA buyer to flip it, right? In other cases, you may buy a property and you got it real inexpensively, and you just wanna put it right back on the market and sell it to somebody who isn't restricted by the 90-day rule. Maybe a typical investor or a cash investor or a regular money person who isn't appraisal sensitive, right? But in order to flip, you gotta know these little things that I'm telling you, and that's why you wanna subscribe, okay? When you subscribe, you get the information for free that me learned the hard way. How do I know what I'm talking about? Because I went to sell a property that I owned for six weeks and I was gonna make 40,000 on it. And what happened? Can't get a new appraisal. Gotta wait six more weeks. Lost the buyer, because it couldn't wait six weeks to move in. Didn't know what I was doing and had to wait those six weeks and make the payments for six weeks, okay? So that's why you subscribe. So you, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you can learn from someone who has actually done it, okay? So another thing about flipping it is starting and flipping is it's important that you understand what you're gonna be able to get for the property when you sell it. That's market research, but one of the biggest mistakes people make, and I see this on TV all the time, you know, I bought a property for 200,000, we put 50,000 in repairs, and we sold it for 320, and our profit was 70. No, it was not 70. Unless you paid cash and had no carrying costs for your loan, you still had tax expenses, property taxes during the time you held it, you still had selling expenses, you gotta pay the realtor, to sell it, unless you're selling it yourself, which they're not, okay? They're using realtors to sell these properties. And I recommend you use a realtor to sell the property. You can negotiate the fee, okay? But they're gonna keep you out of trouble, okay? They're gonna help you with your disclosures, with the legal paperwork. You know, this is a large amount of money. Remember, when people buy homes, it's the biggest purchase they ever make, okay? A lot of money involved, all right? So it's important that you have professional help and do things properly so you don't end up having something come back and bite you in the rear end, right? So when you're starting and flipping, you wanna ensure that you understand you're gonna have costs when you sell the property. And so on that example, you know, that 70,000 in gross profit may get down to like 45 or 50 after paying real estate fees and expenses, okay? So keep that in mind. So when I look at a deal, that I wanna flip, I said, what am I paying for it? And what is it, can I sell for? Now typically most of these single family homes that are flippers, for example, they're three bedroom, two bath, they're under 1500 square feet. They're gonna cost me, you know, 40, $50,000 tops to totally renovate. So if I have, you know, 100, 110, $120,000 spread, you know, I'm probably gonna make somewhere gross around 60, 70,000. After real estate expenses, may I make 40, 45, carrying costs, et cetera, okay? So some say, well, you know, it's a lot, a lot of money. Well, you know what is a lot of money, okay? The average person is working, you know, 40 hours a week for 50 plus weeks a year, and they're making somewhere between 25 and 3,500 a month. So that's one deal, and that's what some people work every day. That's waking up, getting ready, driving to work, working all day, driving back. It's a lot less energy to do one deal than to work a whole year to make the same amount of money. So not every deal has to be a home run. You know, you can make five, 10, 15, 20, 25,000 on a small deal. That's great, you made money, okay? If you lose a little bit of money, that's called a lesson. We've all done that, all right? So don't feel like you're gonna win every time because nobody wins every time, all right? Nobody gets every deal, nobody makes money on every deal. So lastly, when you are working on getting into the flipping business and you wanna get started, one of the things I spend a lot of time on is driving neighborhoods. It's one thing to look at a property on the internet, it's another thing to go where the property is. I look at properties in the daytime and I look at properties late at night. The difference in the neighborhood can be night and day in terms of what's going on activity-wise. Sometimes how it is in the day and how it is at night, very similar. Sometimes how it is in the day, at night you got crime, you got all kinds of problems going on. It's almost like a different neighborhood. So when you're buying these properties at a discount or to be flipped, remember there's a reason why people wanna get rid of them. There's a reason why they may be at a discount and you wanna research that reason. Doesn't mean you can't make money with them, 
Okay, I made a lot of money in some very tough areas in the early days, all right? So yes, you can make money on them, but know what you're dealing with, okay? Know that when you get into flipping, you're gonna be dealing with properties that are typically distressed, that typically have some problems, and you're gonna to have to figure out what those problems are and solve them. Whether it's plumbing problems, electrical problems, roof problems, sewer problems, whatever it is, they're all just, you know, pipes and wire and they're not that complicated, okay? The ones that are complicated when you're flipping and you have to watch out for is bacterial problems like mold, okay? Houses infested with a mold situation, something like that, or some pest issue like drywood termites or termites where the property is getting eaten half alive, right? So you got to make sure that you have to inspect these properties and find out what you're buying, including a termite report, to make sure that the bones are good and they're not all eaten up by bugs or you don't have a mold infestation, which could cost you a lot of money to remediate uh, and repair, okay? So I'm Paul McGuire and I look forward to seeing you on the next video where we're gonna talk about how to get started in real estate. You know, it's a lot of fun being a real estate investor and you potentially can make a lot of money, but it's, a, it's slow money, okay? There's flipping is one way to get some cash together, but the real wealth is in apartment buildings. I talk about that in some of my other videos where you've got a number of people paying rent and over time your property goes up in value. But flipping is fun and you can make money with it and a lot of people do it to get started and you can sometimes make more money flipping than you make working in a regular job, but I don't recommend that you quit your job to start flipping, keep your income coming in, because you're gonna need that money, one, to qualify for loans, and two, to make payments on those properties that you may be flipping for a profit that you don't necessarily uh, have cash from, from rental income, to pay those notes and those mortgages.